Hello everyone, I'm Isha and I'd like to welcome all of you in today's Cell Talk webinar. In today's session, Jay Darji will be presenting the paper titled A Hybrid CNN GLCM Classification for Detection and Great Classification of Brain. Jay is an engineer with well developed skills in data analytics, research, and software development. He is also a good communicator with good interpersonal skills and is used to working in a team. He is always enthusiastic to learn and undertake new challenges. At Renix Life Sciences, he works as a junior engineer working in a technical research department for digital medicine. He is also responsible for developing various statistical methods for animal detection with human heart rate data captured with the help of wearable devices. He is an electrical engineer. He did his bachelor's degree in electrical engineering from the Institute of Infrastructure Technology Research and Management, along with voluntary work at the Blind People's Association. Moreover, he has done research in biomedical signal processing and machine learning as well. Since the completion of his studies, he has wanted to become a data scientist. Thus, he began learning data analytics and machine learning through a summer internship. At Renix, he hopes to increase his technical knowledge while proving solutions and improvements to common industry problems. In the long run, he aspires to contribute significantly to industry development and optimize to create something that would genuinely improve the lives of thousands. So without any further delay, I'd like Jay to carry the talk. Hello everyone, I'm Jay Darji, and I'll be presenting about hybrid CNN GLCN classification for detection and grade classification of brain tumor. Original authors for this papers are Akila and others. The title is a hybrid CNN GLCN classifier for detection and grade classification for brain tumor. Parent topic is new technology, new technologies related to managing. This paper is published in Brain Imaging and Behavior in uh, in year 2022. This journal is uh, having an impact factor of 3.224. Uh, 3 this, re uh, this research has an impact on brain tumor, grade classification of meningiomas, and correlation between AI and brain tumor. So to start with, I'll start with the introduction of tumor. The tumor is basically a uh, excessive body cell, which is affecting the uh, healthy cells. So formally, a tumor is a volume of irregular and abnormal cells affecting the function of nearby healthy cells in a human body. Uh, out of all the tumors, meningioma is the most common type of uh, tumor occurring in adults with uh, having high, a high risk factor. Uh, meningiomas are seen in dura meter, which are the outer tissues of brain and called meninges. Uh, Tumors are basically of two types. One is benign, and uh, which is also known as a non-cancerous tumor. Other one is men, uh, malignant, which is also known as cancerous tumor. Uh, this uh, classification, is, classification is done uh, based on the multiplication rate of this cancerous uh, cells. Uh, so benign tumor does not uh, spread to other parts of the body, whereas malignant or cancerous tumor appear as a mass and pulls out healthy cells by taking nourishment from body tissue. So researchers have observed that 70% of the tumors are benign and categorized as grade 1. So grade 1 is being the benign tumor and grade 4 is being the uh, malignant tumor. This grade is defined uh, by the same multiplication rate of uh, uh, cancerous cells. So. You might be wondering uh, how these uh, tumors are identified. So in general, in general, the diagnosis of brain tumor begins with MRI, magnetic reson uh, resonance imaging, as it provides detail detailed information on both hard and soft tissues with fat and fluid substances of the brain through uh, electromagnetic fields. Uh, which, uh, this MRI is uh, uh, giving better image or detailed image than uh, modalities like uh, CT, X-ray, and PET, etc. Uh, 
the ncis and who has reported that every year around 13000 people are affected by tumors and every year the death rate is progressively increasing because of the late diagnosis and semi -auto automated grading system there are some present challenges which uh, pathologists uh, face so the detection and classification of tumor by manual method is the greatest challenge right other than that, people uh, use machine learning approaches to uh, classify the uh, brain tumor. But that also requires uh, uh, numerous uh, features for the class efficient classification. So current conventional methods uh, are not fully automated. And they require labeling for cla uh, classes of classification. Moreover, these conventional methods lack in achieving uh, special in inheritance and invariance. This term basically means that uh, what our uh, proposed method is, uh, which is uh, CNN based identification of a tumor, and this, if the image is uh, not even uh, clear, then also our algorithm is able to identify the feature out of uh, uh, th those images. The objective of this research is to uh, develop a computer-aided method using deep, le deep learning architecture named uh, CNN DeepNet uh, for the classification and diagnosis of meningeum brain tumor. Uh, so uh, this is the flow diagram of uh, our methodology. So the first step is uh, the acquisition of uh, MRI brain images. After that, we are pre-processing it, or we can say the augmentation we are doing here. Augmentation uh, is done by scaling of image, skewing of image, or rotating of image, et cetera, et cetera. After that, we are uh, fitting those images to CNN deep net classifier. And after that, it will uh, classify whether the image is, image is having tumor or not. So if, if the CNA is giving a zero as an output, then the image is normal. Otherwise, the image has tumor. After that, uh, if the tumor is identified, then we are uh, doing global threshold uh, segmentation, which is also pre-processing after the tumor is identified. And after that, we are feeding that segmented region to uh, GLCM CNN uh, diagnosis system, which will uh, classify the tumor in uh, two, two categories, whether the uh, tumor is grade 1 or grade 4. In other words, if the tumor is uh, benign or malignant. And that results are uh, assessed with some uh, various performance uh, parameters. So the first type is data acquisition. Uh, so for the for uh, proposed study, the researchers have used BRATS dataset, which is having the MRI images of uh, uh, 600 patients, out of which uh, 340 brain images are uh, normal and 260 are uh, abnormal. After that, this uh, dataset is grouped into training and testing dataset. Training set is uh, consisting of 90 normal images and 75 abnormal images. And testing set consists of 250 normal images and 185 abnormal images. So in the pre-processing, as I discussed, we are uh, doing augmentation, uh, which includes the resizing of brain images. images. And to, uh, this is because to, uh, this is because of uniform, uniformity in the images. We are also flipping up and down, rotating the images at certain angles and skewing. So all the input images were of uh, 512 into 512 pixel resolution that were uh, after resized into 256 into 256 pixels and achieved the same dimensionality with scaling. The tumor regions are uh, segmented using a uh, global thresholding approach in fusion with connected component method. After that, a combined GLCM and CNN classifier is proposed for diagnosis of segmented MRI images into normal and abnormal. 
the next step is feature extraction and classification so <clears throat> researchers have proposed an end to end uh, deep learning architecture for the classification of uh, brain tumor so the first three layers are uh, feature extraction and after that there is a classification so first layer is convolution layer which is the uh, building block or core block of this architecture uh, which basically uh, prepares the feature map of, uh, of of this image it consists of filters and the parameters to be learned from this image so basically this uh, prepares a feature map and uh, sends sends ahead that uh, feature map to pooling layer pooling layer uh, works as uh, pooling layer uh, reduces the features uh, calculated from convolution layer there are basically uh, two main type of pooling layer one is average pooling and the other is uh, max pooling so as the name suggests uh, if we consider this uh, square block as 2 cross 2 filter and if the we are using average filter uh, sorry average pooling then uh, the out if there are four pixels and uh, having intensity of uh, five six seven eight and if we are using average filter then it will keep average of this four pixel and that will be our output if we are using the max pooling layer then whatever the maximum value out of uh, uh, this four pixels will be our output so after that, it will be uh, going to the fully connected layer. This layer will uh, flatten out the uh, input pixels and form a vector out of it. So basically, there can be more than one uh, fully connected layer. In our case, there are two fully connected layers, one for abnormal images and the other for uh, normal images. After that, uh, the flattened vector will be given to a uh, hidden layer. And that will classify our, our image as uh, what you call it, abnormal or normal. So this is what I have discussed. Uh, uh, so the neuron in the output layer, when uh, start uh, states as zero, repre represents the non-tumor case, and represents the tumor case when it is stated as one. So after we identified uh, the image is normal or abnormal, we are doing segmentation. The classified managed tumor image is segmented to obtain dilated or eroded images by global opening and closing uh, functions respectively. So what is dilated image is uh, basically we are adding more pixels at the boundary of uh, any object in the image and eroded images uh, the reverse of that. We are uh, removing the pixels at the boundary of any object in the image. So these two images, eroded and dilated images, are subtracted to obtain the threshold image. So what if threshold image is? Uh, we have the gray, uh, grayscale image, and we are uh, putting a threshold out of which, uh, and because of that, in the output we are getting a binary image, which we call uh, as a black and white image. So in order to improve the segmentation process, an area morphological function is utilized in threshold image to eliminate the missed pixel. So mor morphological functions are, uh, these are also called morphological functions, eroded image and diluted, uh, sorry, dilated images. After that, we are labeling uh, the threshold image to segregate the tumor regions of brain from normal regions. And Researchers have observed that experimental results of segmentation so show better performance with sharp boundary detection of uh, tumor pixels. The boundary detection of the proposed method shows uh, high effectiveness in comparison to convolution, conventional uh, region growth algorithm. So basically, this is the flow, uh, flow chart after we are uh, segmenting the tumor. So the segmented uh, region will be uh, given to the GLCM feature extraction and the features will be extracted there and it will be given to CNN transfer. After that, the, our algorithm will uh, classify whether the uh, tumor is uh, benign or 
अमेरिकी तो इन द रिजल्ट परफॉर्मेंस ऑफ द प्रपोज फेन एंड डेट डीप नेट डिपेंड्स ऑन इट इट्स एक्यूरेसी एंड लो वैल्यू अगेंस्ट लो लॉस वैल्यू अगेंस्ट द इको The accuracy and loss plots are plotted against the epoch for training and testing dataset in the uh, next slide. The parameters are hyper tuned for the improved performance. Uh, researchers have used mini batch of 64. They have implemented batch regularization, normalization, and have used 50% dropout with 0.01 learning rate uh, as a parameters, and they have tuned those parameters. in this proposed method the classification rate of normal images and affected tumor images is 99.5% when uh, 340 normal mri images and 206 affected tumor mri images are considered for classification so <coughs> the classification rate is nothing but um, how many images are classified correctly so that is classification rate and they have also uh, found that uh, apart from 99.5% classification rate they have found validation accuracy of 99.4% uh, validation accuracy is uh, when we are training our algorithm with uh, certain uh, samples out of those certain samples we are keeping keeping some samples for the testing of the algorithm so that is validation so uh, these are the performance metrics we have uh, researchers have uh, checked the performance of algorithm with various uh, parameters like sensitivity specificity accuracy precision epson score and dsi uh, this is the uh, plot for accuracy versus loss against each uh, epoch so as the epochs are increasing the accuracy is increasing and uh, so does the losses are decreasing uh, this is the sample image of how low grade many low grade meningiomas are look and this is for the high grade meningiomas uh, so it is observed that matrix uh, sensitivity specificity accuracy precision and epson score how the proposed cnn deep neural net network uh, performs better than the conventional machine learning method so in the table we can say there are four methods uh, out of which the below three are a uh, pre trained deep neural network of a uh, pre trained uh, deep neural network and the first one is uh, the proposed cnn deep net neural network so the next column is uh, the input size of the image after that how many layers they have used so for the pro uh, proposed method there were seven uh, seven layers including convolution uh, pooling uh, and hidden layers after that all have done uh, hyper tuning of the parameters and the last uh, last column is for the accuracy so we can observe that uh, out of all the given uh, pre trained networks uh, deep cnn has performed better with 99.4% accuracy uh, this is the comparison between uh, what all available literature uh, which have used machine learning machine learning methods and deep learning methods as well all have uh, done a classification based on uh, two class classification they have all done pre processing and have used a different feature extraction methods out of all our method has outperformed all with 99.4% accuracy in conclusion the deep the uh, cnn deep net architecture is designed with five convolution layers with relu activation which uh, max pooling layers and multi neural uh, feed forward neural network to obtain deep features from input mri relu activation is uh, is also known as a uh, rectifier uh, which is similar to the uh, high pass filter in electrical engineering which uh, basically allows positive 
positive values to pass and uh, restricts the negative values uh, obtained in the indices. After that, uh, a a global threshold uh, segmentation approach is used for segmenting the detected tumor affected region, where both dilation and erosion are used for locating the tumor regions. Further, a novel uh, diagnosis system using uh, GLCM CNN classifier is proposed and achieves a high classification rate and accuracy. Thus, proposed CNN network has achieved higher classification rate of 99.5% with better specificity of 98.6% and sensitivity of uh, 97.2%. So the impact of the research is, uh, as we all know, that the greatest challenge right now is uh, to uh, identify in the grade of the uh, tumor with semi-automated uh, methods. So this research will help in uh, identifying a tumor and grade of the tumor automatically and with high uh, accuracy. So yeah, thank you for uh, listening to me. Thank you, Jay, for this very detailed and informative talk. Now I'd like the audience to ask questions. First question is by Noku. She asks, what is an eroded image for extracting threshold image? So <clears throat> eroded image, which uh, basically means that if we have an object in the image, and if we want to extra, uh, segment that, we are basically uh, removing the uh, surrounding pixels at the boundary and that resulting image will be called as eroded image. Okay, hope that helps, Nupu. Uh, the next question is by Vijay. He asks, does down sampling of pixels from 512 to 256 affect feature density or quality? So down sampling will uh, certainly affect the quality of the image, but I'm not sure about the feature density. OK, thank you, Jeff. Uh, I don't see any further questions. Jay, can you please move to the last slide? Yeah, yes. So before concluding today's session, I'd like all of you to inform about our next session, which is on the 12th of April, 2023, to be presented by Yogita Das on the topic, Phase Two Study of Pembrolizumab in Patients with Recurrent and Residual High-Grade Meningiomas. That brings us to the end of our CELTOC webinar today. Thank you, everyone, for your kind attention and time. Hope to meet you in our next webinar. Thank you.